How does Schitt's Creek manage to revive an age-old premise? Looks like a bit of a typo. Pubic relations. What? Why is the main character's development simply awesome? Are we terrible parents? Do you not know my middle name? And how does the show break down stigma in a year that's challenged our idea of normal? Welcome to the marriage of Patrick Brewer and David. David Rose. Hi, I'm Clive, and you're watching Awesome Movies. The answers to these questions are also the reasons you should watch or rewatch Shit's Creek. Let's go. Social commentary that doesn't feel heavy. The show's premise embodies the classic fish-out-of-water scenario, which could easily feel cliched, yet doesn't. Viewers watch the once-wealthy Roses adapt to their new normal in a backwater town after their spectacular fall from riches. Crammed into their small motel room, the emotionally stunted group initially tries to find ways back to their old lives. But with time, they realize they just might need their new neighbors and each other. In the end, they even enjoy their new lives. And that is pretty much the main premise. But don't let what lies on the surface fool you, because this show proves that simplicity done right is the ultimate form of sophistication. Keep watching to see how. Right, I won't assume you've watched it, so it's time for brief introductions. Meet Johnny Rose, played by Eugene Levy. The former video store mogul rocks a smart suit and is always the businessman. David, a write-off is a business expense used to reduce your taxable income. Okay, well then, why isn't it called a tax write-off? It is! At Johnny's side is Catherine O'Hara as Moira Rose, a creation unlike any other. The former soap opera star rocks the most absurd wardrobe, hairstyles, and vocab. Don't be a dewdropper. Throw some concealer under those peepers, make like a swell, and go put on the ritz. The son, David, is played by Dan Levy, Eugene's real-life son, and also the show writer. David's been hurt in love, but also by his parents' former hands-off parenting style. I've been burned so many times, I'm basically the human equivalent of the inside of a roasted marshmallow. David's sister, Alexis, is vain and self-interested, an oddly lovable parody of the stereotypical rich girl. You're not the only one dying in this town. It is boring, and I'm just trying to make the best of it. On their own, the Rose's dysfunctional family dynamics are comedic gold. How many people do you know that are currently in the prison system? Is it like um, I'm pretty sure 12? just two. But when their lives intertwine with those of the town locals, the humor quotient explodes. Now, you might ask how this age-old storyline does not feel overdone. Indeed, there are heaps of other comedies out there, but Schitt's Creek stands out for making the over-the-top characters feel realistic and relatable. This feat boils down to Daniel Levy's writing. In its light and easy way, it's a poignant social commentary. It shows how Western society's obsession with wealth and public standing leads to a disconnect from what's really important family and community. But while it sounds heavy, it doesn't feel that way while watching it. Every episode comes with guaranteed fits of laughter. And who doesn't need that after the year we've all had? Next, there's another reason to watch Schitt's Creek. The solid character development. Let's dig into why the Rose's emotional arcs are so gratifying. Johnny Rose's arc is the most subtle. When he first meets Stevie Bud, a local, he talks down to her. He also looks down on the neighbors, even though Roland did a great deal for the family in their first year. But then, at the end of the show, Stevie is like a surrogate daughter and runs the Rosebud Motel with him. And Roland is one of his best friends. We'll tell you what, you stay here, I'll grab your bag and maybe... A few shrimp for the road. While Johnny appears to be the most rational Rose member, his development is the most representative of a theme that writer Dan Levy wanted to explore, which is using money to navigate relationships in place of real human interaction. In this regard, his role as head of the family shows a powerful arc. He used to be an absentee parent who didn't have a lot of faith in his kids. He would rather pay for David's success than spend time teaching him. It took him four seasons before he accepted that David could run his own business. As far as character arcs go, this one feels realistic. At the end, he's still awkward, but he's more demonstrative with his love, and he now knows what's important. Over to Moira. No, 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 no! She's the one who appears most resistant to change. Moira grew up in a small town like Schitt's Creek and hated it. So she transformed her persona into the larger-than-life actress we got to know. This character's core identity is her acting, and we knew that right from the start. Her obsession with performing is so intense that she overlooks her kids completely. We all have to go, David, unless you have some special excuse. It's my birthday. 
By the end of the show, she's still narcissistic and obsessed with being a performer. Didn't you once take the wrong baby home from preschool? Alexis looked Chinese as an infant. How many times must I defend myself? But her softer side peeks through every now and then. And for the first time in her life, she questioned whether they were good parents. Have we failed them, John? I'm worried about our children. Are we terrible parents? And throughout the series, her character grows. At one point, she even has a motherly moment with Stevie when the latter gets stage fright. Granted, her relationship with David still needs some work. Like when she accidentally revealed the childhood embarrassment online, but doesn't have Alexis remove the post because she doesn't want to lose the publicity. In short, she's changed, but also stayed true to herself. And for her character, that's a good choice. Other comedies could easily have fallen into the trap of changing her too much for the sake of wrapping up the show. But Dan Levy's pen is too sophisticated for that. Now for Alexis. I don't skate through life, David. I walk through life in really nice shoes. Her character has arguably undergone the most growth and doubled, nay, tripled in maturity. Really generous of you, Alexis. Like, surprisingly generous. From being a college dropout and purposeless rich girl, she completed her studies. Her newfound intellectual curiosity was as refreshing as a cold drink on a hot summer's day. She went on to start her own business. But most of all, after reflecting about who she is and getting a better grip on reality, she was able to make a tough yet mature decision in love. Most of all, though, we saw the former harshness between her and her brother gradually being replaced by something softer and heartwarming. I was the one at home not having fun because I was constantly worried which East Asian palace Alexis was being held hostage in this week. Not mom and dad. Me. Granted, there are probably other shows with characters that mirrored Alexis's arc, but Levy managed to keep it realistic. And now for David. At the beginning, he had serious trust and self-esteem issues and yearned for real family relationships. Like the rest of the Roses, he was entitled and snobbish. I don't have a lot to my name right now, but I do have one thing. Self-respect? No. Taste. But as time went on, we saw he's in fact a man with a huge heart. I know that she is different now, different enough to know that she made a mistake. You might ask what makes his arc any different from other shows? Well, here it's important to mention that he's a landmark character in LGBTQ fiction. Why? Because fiction and the media often represents queer people through stereotypical glasses. Schitt's Creek doesn't do that. Sure, David is sassy and has great taste, but his personality is much more than his sexuality. For example, his friendship with Stevie challenges the stereotype of a gay best friend. They don't just talk about dates or do nails. Fine. But I'm only doing this because you called me rude, and I take that as a compliment. By developing David's character in an unconventional way, Schitt's Creek aims to break stereotypes. The show as an agent of change. Whether you're a Schitt's Creek virgin or not, you'll get the next moment where Patrick serenades his love with a Tina Turner classic. David Rose. Okay. There he is. Right there. That's him. <laughs> Can't miss him. Can you let me know if I should pull the fire alarm? Yes. I call you when I need you, my heart's on fire. On top of its acting, writing, and wardrobe accolades, Schitt's Creek has been hailed for its portrayal of queer relationships. We journey with David as he falls in love with Patrick Brewer, and this pair is now one of TV's most lovable couples, on par with Ross and Rachel from Friends. What's remarkable, though, is how little screen time is given to the couple struggling with society and fitting in. What's also noteworthy is that while most TV shows make queer relationships a sideline, in Schitt's Creek, David and Patrick's story is actually the central love story. This results in representing queer people how they want to be represented, as normal people. On that topic, no one in the show ever questions his pansexuality, and homophobia doesn't get any screen time at all, which is a first in a show with a queer character. Levy has admitted that he drew on his own experiences and personal life. He has a self-professed lack of patience for homophobia-driven storylines and queer tragedy tropes, and wanted to give that no power in the show. This all goes a long way into normalizing LGBTQ relationships. In this fictional queer relationship lies a powerful message. I do drink red wine but I also drink white wine. I like the wine and not the label. Does that make sense? Yes. Levy told the New York Times, I want to feel like I'm putting something out into the world that's of consequence. It is a comedy, but there's a bit of weight to it. In our own little way, we're taking a stand. 
Well, it's fair to say he succeeded in doing just that. A group of more than 1,800 mothers of LGBTQ kids wrote to the cast to thank them for everything the show had done for their kids. It read, in part, Your commitment to represent love and tolerance in your show is so important to families like ours. We sincerely believe that shows like Schitt's Creek will serve as a catalyst to help change the world into a kinder, safer, more loving place. So, if you want to watch an open-minded show where stigma is left in the 18th century where it belongs, then this one's for you. But now, it's getting time to wrap up. The Canadian-made series ticks all the right boxes. During the 2020 Emmy Awards, it swept every category in the comedy division, from writing and editing to hairstyling and costumes. Each cast member of the Rose family took home an acting award. In total, the show took home nine Emmys. However, I would say its success also has something to do with its deeper message, which Dan describes best. Our show, at its core, is about the transformational effects of love and acceptance and that is something that we need more of now than we've ever needed before. What better medicine to heal the wounds of 2020 than love and laughter? Thanks for watching! Do you agree Schitt's Creek is simply the best? If you haven't seen it yet, did you add it to your watch list? Share with us in the comments. And as always, stay awesome!